I, I know it's a kind of sexuality was already sort of a mushy topic and love makes it worse, but where, does, where do perceptions of love fit into the work that each of you is doing? Well, one thing that <clears throat> love sometimes gets, I don't know, shall we say reduced to, is bonding. Mm. Now, there are many kinds of bonding. I mean, we bond to our cats, we bond to our partners, we bond to our parents, we bond to our children. But there is a common brain system that, invo that actually activates that bonding in all of those circumstances, whether it's a, ro a romantic bonding or the attachment that a couple feels 30 years after they were married. They're, the work of oxytocin in the brain is absolutely critical for all of those bonding experiences, right? Including and maternal bonding. Including maternal course. bonding, clearly. And, and what, what's striking is as you read the scientific literature on maternal bonding, and if you know something about the bonding of, you know, say, prairie voles to each other after their first magnificent sexual experience, they all involve the activation of oxytocin in the same areas of the brain. Clearly, there is functioning in the cortex that's identifying your sex partner as being different from your child, and your child as being different from your sex partner, from your cat, I hope. But you, the, the fact that you're getting the same areas of the brain activated by this particular, and activating this particular neurotransmitter, led us to start looking at this function in rats, because rats are allegedly polygamous. So they want to, males want to spread the genes far and wide in the pool. Females want to spread their genes far and wide in the pool. So females will accept you if you're a swizzle stick, if you're a rat, if you're maybe something else, et cetera, et cetera. So we started to look at this because, as it turns out, a very simple conditioning procedure where the exposure to their first sex partner who's wearing a, an almond odor. Now, almond is neutral. These animals don't care about this. But if you do this, and they learn that their first sex partner is an almond-scented partner. You give them a choice between an almond-scented and unscented partner, and they will copulate preferentially with the almond-scented partner. So why would a polygamous animal do that? That's dumb. Unless, unless and this, this gets to your idea of kind of rethinking these old, tired ideas about the way things work, unless maybe the brain is neither polygamous or monogamous, it's really opportunistic. And whatever you learn in these early critical periods of sexual behavior development, your early experiences with reward are telling you that that reward comes in this almond package. Well, it turns out if you give them the almond odor, you activate oxytocin in the brains, but only in the ones that had their initial sexual experiences with the almond-scented partner. And I think that's a metaphor for what happens in humans.